Hey folks, before we start this podcast, we just wanted to explain that our guest Louie is a civil engineer. Because of that and recent events, this podcast starts with a discussion of the key bridge collapse. If you wish to forego this portion, please skip to the time listed on the screen. Thanks for watching. I lost my job and called you and said, hey, do you need help around the museum? If you built a normal truss bridge, you probably wouldn't have had as catastrophic of a, of a failure. As the racing technology is getting better, the, the consumer technology is going to get better too. Exactly. But at, what point, at what point do you say, I'm going to wait for it to get better before I do anything? And when do you pull that trigger? People don't realize that these batteries are 100 kilowatt hour batteries. They're massive. They're never going to buy an EV because they're a man and they... They yeah. drive, they want that, yeah. they want that 800 horsepower, but in Speak reality, up. in the reality, it's like, Don't okay. Hey, so welcome back to another episode of In the Driver's Seat with ABS. You join us from our museum with a very special guest, an old friend. What are you Lewis? doing? Hey guys, how's it going? I had a, like a dead bug on my knee. Oh, he's very distracting, but we're here with Louis Barone who is one of our OG docents. He's a very good friend of ours, and he's been wanting to come on the show for a while. But he's also fan. critical to a lot of things. We yes, do. Louis, Louis oh, yeah. has a lot of very good opinions and facts that every time you talk to Louis, he always has a fact. Yeah, facts or opinions that nobody else yeah. agrees with. But Louis is also one of those people who Louis gets behind shit done. the scenes, especially at Concord, is oh, like yeah. a critical piece to ensure the Concord, especially on Sunday, yes, happens oh, yeah. the doing way it. it does. Oh yeah, well, Some, something about being a part of big events like that and seeing the behind the scenes. I've always been, you know, very passionate about that kind of work yeah. and being passionate about what I do here. It just all ties into to kind of what I like. This to is do. why I but, love Louis because we'll do a podcast and I sit on the end like this. And people who sit here don't look at me for oh, half an hour that's until great. I say something. <laughs> and, so Louis uh, already in, looked at me. It's intentional. Um, okay. It's my the, breath. Uh, I'm sorry, Terry. I'm, I'm looking at I you. I get it. But Lu Louis had many roles within the Audrain from here working at, as a docent to obviously continuing to be a critical uh, volunteer with Cars and Coffee as well as the Concours. Well, he was working, an employee during COVID. That's what I mean, yeah. to working at Park Place. But what I loved about working with Louis is he's very very smart and much smarter than me and you and you combined mm -hmm. so i always like to ask uh, that, i would always ask louis questions like for example when the newport bridge you're you know you're an engineer and your timing is impeccable because you know we unfortunately had this tragedy mm -hmm. where this cargo ship ran into a bridge in delaware and one <laughs> baltimore I, bro baltimore, oh, baltimore sorry baltimore baltimore baltimore, baltimore. <laughs> baltimore. um and the first thing I thought of, <laughs> yeah, we can't have laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, because he said the wrong this, name. Yeah. Okay, anyway, this 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 <laughs> car, like, dude, only six people died. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah. Actually, it is pretty impressive. But um, yeah, the cargo ship hit a bridge in um, in Baltimore, and literally, I was like, the first one of the. I, I, obviously, I was sad, but like. I, the the thing went down so fast and I think that's everyone's reaction and my reaction was not only thinking that but I thought oh we're having Louie on the podcast he's gonna know and yeah, have you comments talk about on this it. how yeah. the hell did this thing go down so fast so well, I had a couple of other friends who reached out group chat same thing just like mm -hmm. well give a little background of how sure. you know yeah. yeah so I went to school for civil environmental engineering with a focus in structural and got my master's in structural engineering um and I worked for a structural engineering firm for a while before COVID when I lost my job and called you and said, hey, do you need help around the museum? And we can get into that too. Um, but as a structural engineer, seeing that accident uh, was not surprised at all at how quickly it came down. The amount of force behind that boat Oh, yeah. That hit that bridge. Right. That boat's so Whoa, it's huge, heavy. like nine hundred feet. Like yeah, I think they the estimated energy, at, at something like one hundred and sixty-five thousand tons, which is over three hundred and thirty million pounds. Oh, okay. And the bridge probably didn't weigh a, like too much more than that. It definitely weighed more than that when you include the concrete abutments underneath the water and uh, the piers and everything. But the way that boat hit the bridge is it took out one of the supports to keep it standing. Right. And so from there, it's just a domino effect. Mm. Um, there's been talks across the civil engineering world already as to what bridges are at risk for this. Can anything be done? And it, I, there, there are things that can be done, but you're talking about, you know, deferring 
boats around piers and abutments, you know, further away. So was it like a situation where like that bridge was obviously built, I think in like this in 1977, yeah. right? And they could never anticipate the size of ship. Mm. That was, I mean, because like, I feel like you have to think about that. Boats have gotten bigger and we, right. we do, you know, I, I did some work on the Newport bridge here, yeah. you know, across the way. And there's, you do impact loading on everything, you know, everything from the guardrail to the, the beams themselves and things are designed to take an impact but there are certain levels that you you can't design for my friend said well what would what would you need to do to design that bridge to not get knocked down so there's two things one you can kind of design the superstructure which is everything that's supported above the piers um mm-hmm. you can design that so that it would it would fall in sections instead of all together so if that boat hit that bridge and it was designed differently that column was still going down and each span connected to it was going to fall. Right. N- n- definitely. Oh, right. No matter for, what. For sure, yeah. no matter what. Um, but if you wanted to prevent anything from falling, you're building a dam. Right. That boat weighs so much. Yeah, there's nothing. And then there was talks of, all right, do you bring in tugboats? And do you bring in, I know some cruise ports require a local captain to get on the boat to bring yeah, in the cruise pilot. ship yeah, into port. Yeah, but in this situation. They had two pi- local pilots. Yeah, yeah, well, no, but in this situation, they had a complete technical failure. And you can see in the video that all the lights go out, yeah. mm-hmm. all yeah, the lights they, come back on, yeah. and they try to guide it. All the lights go out again. So it's like some it's of bad. these some of these things are just you know a, a, an attempt at a band aid when it, it it's the it, it's the technicalities of the boat. And right. I'm seeing captains online say this is a relatively common thing. Yeah. But when you're a thousand miles offshore, yeah, it's, it's no not problem. a big yeah. deal at you all. You hit reset and you're good to go. Yeah. Take some time. Yeah. You're saying it may be mm-hmm. bad fuel. It may have been oh, bad really? fuel oh, yeah. on the ship. And I heard they, they dropped every anchor on the boat. Oh, yeah. I mean, dragged they the wow. thing to try they, to... They, they, they called, it, called in the yeah. mayday, which they were able Four to stop the, yeah. stop the bridge from uh, any more traffic from getting on the bridge. Was, so. I think... I think I mean... Yeah. We, it, Just it, from an engineer, I, I was like, yeah, I don't well, know. Well, it's a lucky thing. Yeah. It happened at whatever, 2, 3 one, in the morning. One yeah, something in the early like, in the yeah, morning. Yeah. 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 Yep. Mm. And I think there's a sped up footage of it it's uh, at eight times speed and you can see the thing lose power and immediately yeah. just turn yeah that means the rudder probably was something well, stopped locked. didn't it have like power issues on, like, like, like a couple of years before yeah i think there was yeah. and that's where like you know there goes my you know my knowledge yeah, and, right. and my authority exactly. so right. anything that has to do with the boat failing is but anyway, yeah so is, I, is all speculation when i saw that i thought louis gonna be on the podcast have to yeah. ask him so if but if, if the Newport Bridge got hit, it's going down. Like, there's no question. Oh, that, that was really. my next question. Mm-hmm. If the Newport Bridge got hit, because the way that the no, Newport... The, in the sim- similar fashion. Very similar fashion. Really? Because it's, it's a suspension bridge. So if you lose one of those columns, there's nothing else holding that bridge up. Jamestown Bridge, same. Oh same thing. Uh, Jamestown nah. Bridge would be interesting because it's got... It has a lot of, of, of piers. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at the pictures of the way it, it collapsed, you've got the what I'll call a normal bridge for the sake of this conversation up to the port part where the truss started. Yeah. And then yeah, all yeah. of the truss yeah. fell and then the rest of like the, the yeah, runway up to it was, yeah. was okay. Yeah. The same thing would happen with the Newport bridge. The suspension part would fail. And the Jamestown bridge is built um, as a girder bridge, a big concrete girder bridge the whole way across. So you'd probably lose a section of it. Maybe not the whole thing, but Spider-Man would have saved it. Probably not. But maybe no, he would have. Maybe. Yeah. You'd just be like, th- you barely stop that train. So is, it, is, it, is there like a thought of like, okay, now this bridge has to be remade. Is there a way, is there any like specific kind of bridge that you can build to? Yes, there's, so that, to get into a little, some technical terms, that bridge was designed as what's called a through truss, which means the roadway goes through the truss. Yeah. On the Newport bridge, um, up to the suspension part, it is called uh, just a regular truss bridge because the roadway sits on top of the truss. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you built a normal truss bridge, you probably wouldn't have had as catastrophic of a, of a failure, but the through truss, the way it's connected is kind of how it fell down. So, if you're so there, there are definitely designs that they will likely implement in the new design because of how busy that port is to prevent something like this happening again. It, there will be stuff in the water, the bridge design itself. What about like the dolphins that they, they call it like dolphins that go around the base of the, of the like platforms that hold the bridge up yes um that boat would have crushed through yeah, concrete really? yeah if that thing hit a pier a solid concrete pier it's gonna move it it's, it's gonna, yeah, yeah. Jeez. so if you were to put money on what they're gonna build what kind of bridge are they building these days especially with federal funding coming in i uh, i could see a 
potentially a suspension or oh, you know those cable stay bridges like the new one in in boston and, yeah. and the big pier with all the mm -hmm. they might do something like that because you can get further spans with a cable stay bridge mm -hmm. allow more room between your the peers peers and by doing that you'll open up um more of the waterway for if something was to happen like that again there's more room for it to miss essentially bigger channel how yeah. long how how long and how much money would it take to, to build? above my pay grade yeah. man yeah, yeah. the good the good thing is the federal government's right behind them um, yeah, because neither. it's such a big port, they're going to have to remove all that material as fast as possible yeah. just to open the It'll port affect up. The, econ the economy is going to be affected by that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll, see, you'll see gas prices rise because there's, um, uh, I think, oil shipments go in that area. Yeah. So, like, northeast gas prices will probably, wow. port, probably go up port a little bit. for Porsches, too. Mm -hmm. Damn. I think that's Does the that last of our concern. is going to be affected? <laughs> that's... <laughs> what? Yeah. Does that mean the Sean's, like, no, checking the app, like, I think, honestly, the port in... In Kwanzaa, it's going to be like in uh, Kwanzaa will get busier. Kwanzaa yeah. is going to get, get much get busier. busier. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good get for busier. us. Yeah, or, or not good. It's good for local <clears throat> business. But, yeah, but not good for you know the lives that were lost in the catastrophic. Yeah, you know, it's horrible issue. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, I had to ask. Yeah, no, it's 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 fair. Yeah, I've had friends asking me, you know, all week. Well, not all week, but since it's yeah. happened, just you know, what do you think? What are your thoughts? But this is why we love Louis because he's not only smart, but he applies the knowledge into like our world and he dumbs it down for us <laughs> <laughs> like, what trying to say what'd you say he dumbs, 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 dumbs it down, down for us. us oh yeah he dumbs it down it's like dude explain it like I'm not five but like three and a half yeah um, but perfect Louis will you know do things like organize the whole Louis this year digitized the layout of the Concord field for yeah. the first yeah, time was uh, which was well uh, an experience like for those that don't understand like you know we have about what 180 cars that mm -hmm. have to all fit in specific classes on the field of the breaker yes. all also looking good yeah oh, yes. yeah it's, it's it not it's not just like you know and we do it really well not to interrupt you ben but like when we have no cars, you're interrupting car, it's fine i, I am <laughs> like when we have cars and coffee and you guys you guys have gotten so good at like organizing things because of how many times you've done it but when it comes to a concours like yeah you the, every you concours, year. major concours yeah. around the world have cars in very specific setups yeah there mm -hmm. there are there are a number of requirements for a concours field layout one of them is if you're standing at the house and looking out you want all the cars mm -hmm. to look good and even if mm -hmm. you're standing at the water and taking a picture of the house you want all the cars to look good and even um, there are sponsors to consider, there are tents to consider, there's food to consider, there's traffic to consider, there's, is there enough walking space? Can I fit a stroller between these two cars? Um, and with Louis managing that and being able to get everything digitized and then, you know, explain how it went from this digitized thing on your computer to you're at the field. Yeah. with whatever machine you had laying well, it out. I think you need to give a little bit of background on what we were doing before. Yeah. So David uh, has a great system that has worked yeah. for setting the concord yeah. field perfectly mm -hmm. and at the base of the stairs there's a fountain put a pin in the ground take a rope and run it 320 feet to the hedges in the back and then we make arcs off of that and we you know every x amount of feet we flag that and spray paint so that the the volunteers know where to park a car mm -hmm. and the first year that i helped with that it was me david alex Fafinski, don schneider i think um brendan helped out with that and then tommy and rick boyer have helped yep. out too so we've had a really good crew of people who've been around the museum for a while and understand the the goals to help with that um the first year we did it it took us something like eight and a half hours the next year it was like nine and a half hours because we added more tents, we added more cars, cars and classes. The side and, and then yeah. you get there and the grounds crews have installed trees in places you weren't right. expecting. So now we've got to move a whole class to make it fit. Mm -hmm. But it was next to the other European class. So it made sense to be nearby. Do we move it across the field? Does that make sense? Um, so I was talking to some of the, so since leaving here um, from my job here during COVID, I got a job at um, a land development firm, which is a lot of site civil design and our survey crew. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was thinking, they go and stake out construction sites all the time. There's got to be a way that I can do the same thing. So I met with the survey team, kind of talked with them about the equipment we have and what made sense. And so in our CAD programs, with the permission of my company, shout out to Pre Engineering, they allowed shout me- Shout out to Pre. Dupree, you got it, yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, okay. Not um, the pre. The pre, Dupree. yeah, Grand Prix. Dupree. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Dupree. Yes, oh, not, there's not another T. Not oh. Grand Prix, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, Shit sound effects. <laughs> take, take two. Shout take out to Preet. Yes. Um, they allowed me to use our CAD software, some of our other yeah. programs, to kind of overlay satellite imagery onto the field. 
David worked with me to get sizes of cars and we created those fans of cars out on there. I used GPS satellite equipment that actually ran off of a cell phone service. So I had my phone on like a hotspot the whole yeah. time and I just walked around. It's crazy. Literally, and it would just basically ping you and say, put a flag here. Yep. Yeah. Wow. And so, so me being in 10,000 different directions at once, I'm, you know, on the phone doing whatever and I show up, it's like, Louie, how can I help? He's like, we've already laid out the field, take a flag and put it where there's a dot. And yep. it's like, I can do that. Yeah, that's cool. It's like, I can multitask and actually just put a flag. Just put that's it there. It's like, cool. uh, so it was it, unbelievably efficient. We cut the time down to four and a half hours. Wow. Which was, I think, excellent. Yeah. We have some other things that we want to work on, try to get it even faster. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think we'll definitely be able to do that. And it, it just, you know, during that week, time is everything. Every so minute. You, you need you every save second. four and a half hours there and we're helping you move cars somewhere right. else. Mm -hmm. We're, we're moving yeah. cones. We're setting yeah. something up yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So it was, um, no, it, that was, I was really glad it worked out and, and it's great. I'm already working with David to kind of work on the next yeah. layout. These are like, you know, a lot of, a lot of the details that people don't understand about mm -hmm. events, unless you've like lived in the event world is like, you know, these little details that take up so much time, but are so critical to the event. And, you almost like as a as a patron you don't really notice it because right. it's just mm -hmm. so well done right. you just think that it just this is right. just how it happened but like the road no yeah, like problem the road, the road, yeah. but yeah. like it just it's it, people, it does just happen but there's so much that goes what, into what it what could people have been thinking in 2022 when they arrived at the breakers and there's just this road of plywood like well, what possibly could people have this must have been here for days it's right? like it's like no. hello no. like this was and at, we got there. So you were, what time did you get there to do the road? All what right. time did you get there to do the road? Let me just 22? Ask. Yeah. One? Oh, in 22, yeah. In, in 22, the first year of that was... Like, what time did you arrive at the late. field and saw the... Oh, what time did I arrive What at time the did field? you see the field? I arrived like, oh, at the shit. field, it was, it was like... Three o'clock. Yeah, around three to four o'clock, and it was mm -hmm. truck stock. So, what time did oh. you get there? Probably just around the same time. Yeah. 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 And I got there at 4, 4.30. Like, mm -hmm. I was actually touring around a VIP. Yeah. Who wanted to see locations? Yeah, and I no get, one thought it was going to happen. Yeah, and it was like you <laughs> like know, I'm hearing all yeah. I'm hearing is we have problems. Get to the breakers, okay? So I get to the breakers, and it was like, oh yeah. my god, this is the events. Events happening. done. Yeah, yeah. events done. Yeah, cancel the concourse, send the cars home. See you next year. And it was like, nope, we've just ordered an absorbent amount of money in plywood. It's on its way. They had two different towing comp tow truck companies yeah. pick up plywood across the state and bring yeah, it to and us. Bring it here like that on was, a whim. But uh, yeah, yeah, and but then, again, like we learned from that, and then this year we did it again. But we learned again what yeah. we need. Oh yeah, to we do. we need more. We, yeah. we need more. We put, a, we we put also, a temporary road down yeah. ahead of time. Yeah, and then but also the wood chip. Like it needs there was to be more. Bigger. Yeah, every but, year you learn yeah. more. And Louis helped plan all that too. Like yeah. I had calls with Louis and Justin Wilbur, who um, runs a construction company. Like we had many discussions about what's the right material to use. How much do we get? Do we rent it? Do we buy it? And we ended up with the right stuff. It was good. Uh, we're going to lay it out differently. We're going to get more this year. And it's going to be, hopefully, foolproof. You know? It'll be yeah. beautiful and sunny this year. Cool. We'll oh, we'll, we'll yes. have a lockdown. Oh, and then, yes. of course, so we lay out the road. And then we get to the gathering. And it starts pouring at the gathering. It's like, oh. okay, we need the road here. Yeah. Yeah. We, had, we had just enough leftover sheets. They brought yeah. them over yeah. and helped us get cars out. It worked. That was rough. Yeah. It worked. But we've got infinite stories with Louis of just, how do we do this? Help, please. Yeah. <laughs> Everything from... Uh, the first, so during COVID, we did the the tour. We, did, right. we didn't do the whole concert, from, we just did the tour. Um, from there, yep. Yeah, yeah. And I remember working with Joe uh, at storage to just we need every car fueled all the way. Get oh yeah, yeah. We did. We yeah, ready to we go. We had a lot of people come for that. Zach Brown came yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, Jay was Jay there. Was there. there. Uh, yeah, they uh, we we had a lot of cars out. That for was that a one. great event. It was a good one. That was fun. That's like crazy that that was. Four years, four years ago, ago now. Four years My ago. first concourse five years ago. It's nuts. It's wild. It's nuts. We need like a five-year reunion. Listen, I, yeah. five, I, <laughs> let me handle imagine? the trophies this year, Sean. No, thanks. <laughs> um, so when did you start like volunteering? Uh, so I looked back to figure it out and I, it was, tw yeah, like, like the very beginning of the year 2018. Was it that? Yeah. I thought it was earlier. L Louis, so, Louis, oh, not, yeah, you, you started like are a you little sure? bit before me, I think. Yeah. So, so I, I checked to make sure because I had been coming to, to, you know exhibits here and i had been around for you know as a patron a couple of times i had gone to a couple of cars and coffee like as myself actually 
the first one I went to is at Marble House. I got there super early, and my car is front and center. Oh, that's cool. In mm-hmm. front of the the, mm-hmm. the mansion, so you can see it in all the photos. Mm-hmm. Um, but my, my dad works at the convention center and we had, yep. Audrey had brought some cars yep. to that That's car right. show yep. Yep. Yeah. and the Diablo was there, you know, Lamborghini, one of my favorite companies, my favorite company, no, no question on that. It the is D- your, yeah, hundred percent. Lamborghini is my, my, yeah, yeah. my, my, my stuff. So the Diablo is there and I'm like, oh, this Diablo SV is pretty sweet. And then I don't remember who it was at the time behind the fence. Like, oh yeah, it's only one of 20 Monterey yeah, edition. Monterey and I was like, edition, oh, this yeah. is, this is a sweet car. Which is now Catless. It which is, is now even oh, better. Superchargers so rebuild, good. Catless. Uh, <laughs> is it twin turbo or supercharged? Twin supercharged. Twin supercharged. Oh, supercharged. Let me just yeah. look at the camera and tell everybody. The car goes. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. cooks. So my my dad and working there, I'm like, I'm gonna stay after they close because I want to see these cars go. Yeah. Um, and I just hung out, and I think David was there, a couple other people were there, and you know, I was just phone out, filming the car move, yeah. and then I was like, Do you guys need any help? I would love to get yeah. involved and be yeah. around and like part time or anything, and like we do volunteering. I was like, I'm in. What do you yeah. need? And David gave me his card, and I think I was down here the next week, mm-hmm. and I was like in the exhibit. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, you you were around essentially when I start like when I got really like into it, like when I was interning in full time, um, you know, my first summer here, you were, you know, clearly mm-hmm. already up to speed. But you must have some stories. I mean you you've there's, worked on the floor, you've kinda of done a little of everything. I like have all done of us. a little bit yeah. of everything. It's it's yeah. been it's been really fun. And there's there's something about working in the gallery. Um, and you know, we're here for the cars, we tell the cars stories, but there are the stories that come in that I love. Oh, you will never, I, I will never forget the first summer I was here, I was here like four days a week and it was like, I knew nothing about Newport being from across the water. You know, Newport's another town in Rhode Island. The amount of crazy, not crazy, but crazy stories you hear and yeah. unique people you meet. That In the first two weeks I was here, I'm on the floor, I'm like nervous, like, you know, what if I get something wrong in the car? It's like, mm-hmm. oh, like take a breath. But these two guys walk in wearing Aston Martin jackets I'm like, oh, you guys own an Aston Martin? Then they're kind of like mad humble about it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, we work for the, uh, you know, endurance racing team. I'm like, <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing yeah. here? You but never they, know who's going to walk make it in the door. They're going to Boston or New York and they stop in. You never know who's going to walk in the door. Ever. I like, you get, a, you know, during muscle car shows, you get the brothers who come in. Remember when you had a Nova and a GTO? <laughs> we raced down 95. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Run from the cops yeah, and all yeah, this. Bump start it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had one guy during the uh, the Wonders of Wood exhibit. Yep. And we had the Ford Deluxe in the back corner. Yeah. He came in and he was like, can I get under there? I'm like, yeah, what do you want? Like, the amount of people who lay down in this, oh, yeah. in this I gallery is amazing. Down, looking but he, under an he gets, that's something. original. He gets under there and he's like, I just got one of these. I think he inherited it or something. Yeah. He's like, I can't figure out how to get the mud flaps on. Uh, he was oh, like, I, I've got these mud flaps that came with the car, but I need to get them on. So he got underneath, he took a couple of pictures, like, oh, that's what I'm missing. I need to put them in there and this. And he yeah, showed a picture of he loved it. So it's stuff like that. So really tell cool. one of you, like, your favorite like stories from either like in the museum or like just an experience you had like volunteering or at work or there's, whatever. There's this one story which I know I've told around a couple of times so maybe you've heard it. We, we're know, not gonna interrupt you like Antonio interrupts me. Don't look at me like every that. Time. Just so, listen to the fucking story. I think it <laughs> was during, <laughs> I think it was during um, Horseless to Horsepower. Mm. Where we had a lot of cars from um, the motor, the patent wagon up yeah. to 1930, yeah. the, the Alfie, yep. right? The Alfa Romeo. Yep. Um, we had the, uh, I think it was Doris Duke Duesenberg, the Packard, yep. the Franklin. I don't, don't know if that car's still around anymore, but the Franklin uh, was back there. Virginia, Virginia. Virginia. Back. Yeah. yeah. So the big, the big hitter is in this corner. Yep. And you know, that exhibit was amazing because you saw a lot of people who come in and they're just blown away by the size, the, mm. the art that the cars are the and the them. elegance. Yeah. Right. So there's this couple, older couple walking outside and you see the guy, he's the husband, he's like eyes up to the window you can tell he's like i want to go dialed <laughs> and you see she's like no come on let's go, keep going keep going so they walk out that yeah. way five ten minutes later they come back they come in and you know when when, when yeah. patrons come into the museum i give them a minute to kind of ingest everything and then i will talk to them ask them if any questions maybe tell them some stories about the cars and i was standing right over here by the duesenberg and uh she comes up to me she's like i'm really glad that i came into this exhibit. My husband convinced me to come in. I wasn't going to, but I'm very glad I did now. And I said, oh, that's, that's great. I was like, can you mind telling me why? And she said, these cars remind me of my mother. And so if I had to guess, you know, 70s, 80s right. years old, she's pretty old. So I'm sure her mother had, had been gone. Um, and she says, 
the the emotion that these cars give me is just something that I didn't expect coming here. Yeah. And I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. And she's like, I want to tell you a story. I was like, great. Love, love the stories. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be good. Yeah. I was not expecting it to be this good. So she tells me her mother worked at the breakers with the Vanderbilt family. Mm hmm. And she was a hand in the kitchen mm -hmm. and every day she would get in a car just like the ones we had in here. They would drive to the market. She'd pick up the vegetables and the meats and the fruits for the day. They'd bring them back and she'd help prepare everything in the kitchen. And then the food would be, you know, served to the family. And during that time, you know, I think we're talking 20s, 30s, 20s 40s, probably, yeah. right? Um, a lot of parties in Newport mm. and you know the, the great Gatsby era oh, you think of, about yeah. all these yeah. big elegant parties that Pre the people who owned great them depression, right yeah. but it wasn't just the elite rich and wealthy who had these parties you had all these people who were working in these homes you know mm. maids um, you know house cleaners chefs everything they also had parties she's telling me they they would go down to 40 steps or they'd set up a tent in one of the yards and they'd also have these big elegant parties so her mother's friend worked she was one of the maids for um, mrs vanderbilt and she was in charge of all of the dresses and the outfits and stuff and she said would you like to come to one of the parties tonight she's like oh i don't have anything to wear well i'll get you something to wear mm. what do you mean i'll just take something from the her wardrobe mrs vanderbilt's wardrobe we'll wear it I'll have it clean and pressed and put back in the morning before she even wakes up. She's like, you sure? Yeah, I, I can definitely do that. All right, fine, let's go. So she sneaks out a dress, gives it to this woman's mother. She wears it out to the party. They have a blast, a big night, and they go back to the house. She takes the dress, presses it, cleans it, puts it away. All good, didn't mm. get caught. No one's ever gonna know. Mm. So the next day she's, in the car on her way down to the market picks up the fruit and the vegetables comes back starts prepping things in the kitchen she gets called into the dining room she never gets called into the uh -oh. dining room and in the dining room is mrs vanderbilt sitting there reading newport news whatever newspaper was out at the time mm. and newport she, life magazine newport life magazine yep. she she walks up it's like uh, i heard you were looking for me can i help you with anything it's like oh she turns the newspaper around and there's a picture of her oh. at the party in it oh. and it was just oh. like hey there's these kids having a good time again. She got tagged. Oh, she was no. in the dress front and center on the newspaper. Ugh. And all Mrs. Vanderbilt said to her apparently was, you look lovely in this dress. <laughs> and that was it. Wow. And she said her mother never snuck around and tried to do anything like that again. The amount of authority that that one sentence must have had. And just, she was just like, I got away with it, but I will never do that wow. again. So she like, didn't get away with it. She did. In she in did. Way. But yeah. she, 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 did, but she, she did allowed her to get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. So that, but, that tells a lot about Mrs. Vanderbilt. Right. Right. That's like she, when Ben she, and I took a sheer on out one night. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> why are you? The sheer on? Why? <laughs> and so you have, you have people come into the museum and they tell you these stories. Right. If I wasn't here that day and it was another docent. It's gone. Maybe, maybe no one heard that story. No. If, if her husband didn't convince her to come in and tell that story, and well, we're talking about cars that we have in this room that are driving on this road. On this yeah. road. You know, close to 100 years ago. Yeah. I mean, Newport it's- history cars too. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, that's why, you know, I always say to everyone on the floor, I say this every time, it's like you guys who work on the floor are so important because people can, you know, on a, if there's no one on the floor, for example, you come in, you just look at some metal yeah. sitting on some wood and you leave. And it's just face value, ain't much going on. But mm -hmm. it's it's up to us to either pull that info out of people or give the info about the cars and give them the right. experience to learn. So it's so, it's so important. And uh, it's, it's a nutty story. Yeah. I can't it was, it was amazing. Story. Yeah. And it's like, that's a first like connection. That's like her mother right. talked, was there. Mm-hmm. And the daughter talked directly to you in this building. Yes. And we're talking about something that happened a mile from here a right, hundred yeah. years ago. With the same cars that were in the building same cars. on the road. Yeah. It's just it was wild. Yeah, the whole the whole thing, the whole connection of it all just really shows you how small the community is here. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, I mean the car community in Newport is is it's kind of niche in a way because mm. we're contained on this island mm -hmm. and the stories that are told around here are amazing. I mean, you go just off the island and it's completely different stories, of course. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was it was an amazing all around the whole everything came together just the right way for me to have that story and I was like this is why I do this this is why I volunteer here and come speak to the people and oh, yeah. it's it's one of the yeah. one of the big reasons yeah. to do it's, it all it's very rewarding to work as a work as a volunteer or yeah. obviously working here you know full time but you know to be able to basically pass a background check and you know get access to this 
And you know, I tell I tell the guys all the time, like you while you're on the floor, these are your cars. Mm-hmm. Like the owner's not here. You know, we Sean and I aren't here. Ben Mercer's not here. Like it's these are your cars. You have to make sure they're safe, and you have to like tell the right story about them. Yeah, people ask what what do you do? What's your day to day like? What are you doing in the in the gallery and you know the first thing you're doing is you're keeping an eye on the cars like you're saying right yeah. you want to make sure that no one's getting yeah. touching them scratching them whatever. no touching the cars no touching the get off the cars <laughs> but <laughs> no cell phones on no the floor cell phones. Oh, man. The but the biggest the biggest thing for me oh, is is telling the stories and, and, yeah. and answering the questions you get so many people come in they're so inquisitive about about different things yeah. i like to find the quirks you guys know that i like to find the quirks about the cars right oh and, and we'll do people, this thing where he's like I wonder what the total horsepower in the museum is. The whole so I'm gonna, room. I'm How much horsepower we have in the He's room? He's like, I'm yeah. going to add up all like the weight or the horsepower and like have people like guess at the number. Oh, did, did you guys find the number? <laughs> like the I, I, was talking to, uh, I was talking to you, Stevie, about it. It's half. So we were talking about how many cars in this exhibit are right-hand drive. Oh, it's half. Yeah, half. It's, it's actually half. A, yep. absolutely half, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. It, it's stuff like that. I like it's. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. You're, and the best one, the Toyota Serra. Um... So yeah, you've been around a while. Uh-huh. It's good. Were you here when the little girl, there was a family that came into the museum. This is probably like 2019. Door opens. Husband and wife comes in. Little girl sprints past them. And there was the uh, the yellow, uh, the 458. That might have been earlier than that. Maybe like 20. Yellow 458? That earlier because that was one of the supercar exhibits that was, I was not around for that one. I don't earlier, remember. Yeah. She runs in, okay? okay. Jumps up. Slaps the rear quarter panel on the four by eight. She's like three. We're all like, nothing happened to the dude, car. Dude, but the parents were some scary. I will calls. never forget when we early. This is 2018, so we still had iPads at every car. Oh, I yeah. played a slideshow, and mm-hmm. you just basically you couldn't control it, but you could watch the slideshow. And each car was neat. Oh, no. So this guy's in here with like a, call it an eight year old daughter and like a five year old son, and he's like, they're they're did the loop, they were here for like 40 minutes and then they're on the way out. He's like, here, I wanna get one picture with you guys. And there was our Mach 1 Mustang that's like turquoise in this mm-hmm. deep corner over here. And um, he's like, all right, stand right here, we're gonna take a picture. And she kind of like gives him a little bap on the head. It wasn't like a violent bap, oh, it was no. just like, I'm annoying you. He turned 90 degrees, looked at her with like the devil's stare <laughs> and completely fully extended a push like through her chest and she, <laughs> fell back onto the car. Now, if she was a foot over, she's knocking the iPad into the window of the Mustang and oh, no. breaking the window. Yeah, that's And, good. you know, I've talked about this with both you guys before in the museum, because we've both spent a lot of time at the museum, about learning about how people parent <laughs> yeah. and how people so are true. active or non-active parents. So and true. you can relate to this. People I can't will even come begin in, to tell you I, I used to, as many of you know, I worked in a Tesla, I managed a Tesla showroom in a mall where Can't we had cars imagine. on the floor and Can't. people, parents would come in and treat the cars like it's a playground. Yeah. Could be the kids. yeah. It was like, yeah. Same thing like here. Hundred th- this is like pre model not- three. These are like hundred thousand. Thirty thousand dollar car. Yeah. It's not always yeah. the kids, yeah. though. Oh it's no, not, it's not there. Most of the time, it is the parents. Well, let the me parents. just finish yeah. that, ahead, yeah. just for the justice of this guy. He grabbed these two kids by the ears and yanked them out so fast. It was like mm-hmm. that was the best. Yeah. That's like, what I mean. He couldn't it's have parents. seen that coming. Yanked them, gone out the door. He's like, I'm Oof. so sorry for this. I'm handling it. Gone. Wow. Like we we've had some unbelievable experiences oh, in here yeah. where parents walk in, they're just on their phone. The kids are running around like it's freaking Six Flags. That's I mean, it's <laughs> It's the, nuts. The, so bad. The one that shocked me the most was we had the Chiron in the corner. I don't yep. remember what show. And there's a guy who wants to see it was the shining engine bright. bright. It was the light show. Yeah. So he jumps up on the car, elbows, like leaning onto it. I was like, sir, you can't you can't get up. Oh, I just wanted to look in it. No, you you cannot do that. Please don't lean <laughs> oh on the cars. I'm just you're shocked by some of the yeah. things people do. Can't do it. And people think they're warranted for it. We had a guy in here with, with the guy the gentleman we were just referencing used to sit at the desk. And <laughs> The guy was like, you know, reaching over cars, reaching in cars, taking a picture in the interior. And it's like, sir, those are the rules. Like, you can't do it. So he told the guy like three times. And the guy was like from Europe. So he didn't speak good English, but he was clearly really agitated. And so he threw him out. Like, get out of the, like, get out. Like, this is a museum. Get out. Warranted. Guy walks around the corner, spits on the window. 
all Jeez. over the window. Oh, like, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. And yeah. so the police ended up coming because he was still like hanging around and like loitering. And the police made him clean the window. Oh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all sad. <laughs> Karma. Wow. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. for every, you know, that's how uh, you, you always remember the little ones yeah. like that. You, will, for every you have a hundred people that day or amazing. person who comes yeah. out and you have the one. We have tens of thousands of people that come right. each year and are oh, awesome. And then you get to cars and coffee. Oh, I don't even know if we should go into it. We got some char- we've had some we characters. Can, we could tell stories for We could tell stories hours forever. We've had people coffee. almost hit, run over. Run over You know, volunteers. I'm parking here. I'm not moving. It's like, sir, yeah. it's like, if you want, I say this before, if you want to run the event, like, be my guest. I would love to enjoy it. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and just stand around and just hang yeah. out. I mean, just, I, like, like I said, I think we do a pretty good job of managing so people don't see Right. That oh sort yeah. Of thing, they don't understand it, it how much effort goes agitated. into it. Yeah. There's there's a lot more. It's more than just parking cars in a field. It's mm-hmm. you know we've got cars facing a certain direction, so when people are right. leaving, it makes sense and doesn't cause oh, more yeah. traffic. Well, we may have directive <coughs> from local authorities that we need to do things a certain way. Of course. People come in, they just park their yeah. cars wherever they want. It, it well, doesn't it goes, make our it lives easy. Goes into easy. the whole. You know, everyone has such a connection with their car. You know, a lot of people want. You know, the car is everything oh, yeah. to them. Right. I get it. So it's like you know we I want it to be represented in a way and it is you know it's when you but ultimately a lot of these people end up apologizing and mm, you know you're right. yeah, i've had like, a couple of people yeah, who come apologize up to me. and they realize in the moment that mm-hmm. they were but you know there's like anything else you it's, it's been I've been close a couple of times but i've never had to get to the point where i actually kick someone out of cars and coffee i but I, I, I get some breathing people, space between yeah. them Calm down a little bit. Most of the time, you can make amends. Yeah. We don't want to ever do that. That's no, not I goal. never, I, you never want to throw free someone mm-hmm. out. No, um, but you, you also know, don't but at it. the same time, it's like it's like anything else where if someone you know does something and they're not punished for it, then the next guy will say, "Oh, well, I can do a burnout, yeah. or yeah. I can you know rev my engine, I can rev my straight piped V twelve yeah. Aventador ten times off the rev limiter at nine thirty in the morning in a, quiet in a residential neighborhood." neighborhood. Oh. It's like <laughs> yeah. please, but God. also if it's impeding on someone else's good time, it's like that's yeah. when it, right. Yeah. That's when it. Yeah. See you later. But like we'll we'll deal with it. Call you after the event. But yeah, again, it's all fun. It's all Dude, fun. Cars and coffee starts in soon. Yeah, two and a half weeks. Really? I two, won't be there. April? No. Not April the first, the first weekend. Fourteenth. Fourteenth yeah. weekend. Sixteenth weekend. Yeah. I forget what date it is. I might not be there either. Fifteenth. Whatever. Fourteenth. Fourteenth. Right. Sean will be there. Barry will be there. <laughs> Great. Holding down the fort. We'll all be in Goodwood. <laughs> Holding down Second Beach. Oh, that's yeah. right. Goodwood. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Literally. Oh yeah, Susan won't be there either because he'll be in Europe. We're trying to get them into Goodwood. So, so Louis, tell us about things that you maybe can't tell us about <laughs> when oh, it comes God. to what, I don't know, like just with your job, like in like the, how your job, uh, yeah, I mean, let's like not in, beat in, around the bush. I know inter- exactly what you're getting it intersects at like in the, yeah. uh, like the electric car world. And like, I mean, we don't always necessarily talk about electric cars cause I feel like the three of us are not fully on the electric car train oh mm-hmm. sean's Bar- locked is. in Sean electric cars, cars. Huh? but like but like no i'm i mean I, he, I, I, you're, I you're, I'm you're not, dialed but you have a model three but it's it's yeah. a, it's a tu- it's, it's just a, a tool, tool for me it's not like right. it's something that you're passionate about yeah right uh, like, but i also worked at an electric car company yeah. so i you know i understand the for daddy elon for the the situations and yeah but, like, but I'm not like I'm not like you need an electric car or die. No. Like I, and I, for me, like it's all either. about choice. It's what works for well, you. That's why I just bought the the mini because I want a. I, oh yeah, right, I got, dude. Louis just bought a car in cars and bids. Yeah, first online auction. Cars and yeah, let's go, this baby. Good. Tell us about that and why you bought it. Does Daddy so, Doug say anything to you when you buy it? No, he did have a write up that he did on it, but not oh. not after I bought it. Oh, no. you got to frame that. Yeah. So there, you know. I've got my my Focus ST that I've put. I'm almost at 120,000 oh, miles wow. on it. Big bought turbo. It, bought it new. Big turbo. Done a lot of work on it. I've had yeah. a lot of fun in that car. A lot of car cruises up to New Hampshire and everything. Um, but I'm getting to a point where I'm realizing that you know a lot of people who come in this gallery, they say, I wish I never sold that car. Wish I never got rid of yeah. it. Yeah. Is my car going to be a museum car? No, I don't want it to be. Don't but speak so I want it to be. All right, well, let me know. You do I feel like I'm not so like it about that. I had one of those and I sold it. Yeah. What a Datsun. The, the Datsun two forty Z. The Autozam. Yeah. The, 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 the the yeah. So we want to. Um, I want to keep the car a long time. Right. And in order to do that, I need to stop putting miles on. I've been I dailyed it for seven years. So I need something else that I can drive to just cut miles back. And I'm like, I love convertibles. You guys know that. And you love Antonio. I love Antonio. Who I want to get, I want to get a mini just like him. I want to be just like Antonio <laughs> when I grow up. No, no, I had a mini and I loved uh. it and I wanted to get another. And this car, I saw it online. It's a John Cooper works 2010. 
yeah perfect great cars perfect spec just great what cars. just what i need mm -hmm. and it'll uh you know it's got some some dings and chips here and there Who cares? Per perfect for what i'm looking for so is that a six p yeah nice. it's a six speed um I, I don't be surprised if you see me driving it top down in the middle of the winter i absolutely will oh about. yeah you should, yeah, go, skiing. You should. go skiing with the top go down with the top that would my snowboard sticking yeah. out the it's roof honestly if yeah. you have heated seats which i'm sure that car yeah, does. It has heated heated seats. Seats. you turn the heater on on it's like a, I mean, like, unless it's 12 degrees yeah. out you're gonna be fine well in the it. thing is my dad's had a cutlass convertible for 42 years fifth jesus wait no 40 uh you eight, got rid of that? 48 years. He still has it. Oh, okay. His so, one so. rule is you can't drive a convertible with the windows up. Yeah. Unless it's under freezing. That's that's a good if rule. It's under like 42 like degrees, that. 45 degrees. You put the windows up, heat on. Yeah. And you're still enjoying it. Like you I just saw a guy freezing. out here in a Miata, windows up. It was mm -hmm. like freezing. It's like, but bro, yeah, you but are doing baller. it. Like, so, that's awesome. So, you know, my, my dad and I have the, the Mercedes SL. SL yep. And Acquired from Park Place. Yes, yeah. it was great. That was a good find. That was a good acquisition. Good find, yeah. We we drive that all the time. The top doesn't go up. It's <laughs> oh, when we really? put it in the garage. It's top down until winter time. Oh. Then we'll put the top up right. so it doesn't you know so it can stretch out again, inflate the tires, yeah, put it on the tender. So it's basically useless, like styrofoam. What do you mean? It's just like useless. Like styrofoam is just kind yeah. of useless. The styrofoam. Oh, oh, you mean the the top in the summer? Yes, yeah. the top yeah. is like styrofoam. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, useless. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So we don't we don't like every time everywhere I take that car, it's it's uh. It's top down yeah always yeah i mean that's the point of those cars too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's the goal but getting back to the reason one of the other reasons i got it is we know electric vehicles are coming um you know six speeds and manuals mm -hmm. are dying every day there's, there's less and less of them so mm -hmm. i saw the opportunity kind of i, I kind of see it as a last hurrah if i'm ever going to buy a fun vehicle like that again it will be from the same era or earlier like we're right, we're right. not going to we're not producing these cars anymore so i decided to get that um because we know electric cars yeah. are coming and mm. i'll speak a little bit now on, on what you wanted me to get to so with my day-to-day -day job uh doing land development we're seeing regulations across um, you know, multiple states where they're requiring EV chargers to be included through the in, infrastructure bill, right? Yep. Yeah. It's part of the infrastructure bill, but even town, like local municipalities and towns, like they want to see them. If you do a big apartment building, there's got to be a certain number of parking spaces have to be allocated for that chargers. That was always the biggest problem at Tesla. Well, really? I live in an apartment, mm -hmm. you know, this was like pre superchargers. It's huh. like, that yeah. was always our biggest problem. Condos huh. and apartments. Mm -hmm. So now the, that's changing. We know yeah. that things are, are moving that direction you get a new development in the right town they're gonna tell you you have to put them in but the problem is there's no <laughs> david's David. making an appearance what's up chief can we get a <laughs> shot of that <laughs> yeah get a shot of david hold on yeah no it's too late he's too late running he's away. Around. Yeah, yeah so you've got all these towns they, they, they're kind of making up their own rules yeah there's there's no organization no one really knows where we're heading with this so right. a town might say well if you put in a residential neighborhood then half the houses have to have them or if you put in a a, a, a mm -hmm. shopping plaza then eight eight spots have to yeah. have it another shopping plaza might another town might say 100 spots have it's to just have they it. just pick a number out yeah, of the hat, there's, essentially. There's, yeah and and we're also kind of looking at existing gas stations that are going to be adding electric chargers right. to wow, like, was, the was site really Wow mm -hmm. was one of the earlier yeah. ones. With and Tesla. and you'll, you'll propose this to a town and they'll say, oh, we haven't really thought about this when it comes to getting approval to do it. So it's been interesting to see kind of where that's heading. And the technology is moving so fast. Right. I'm, I'd be very surprised if there's any consistency for a while. That's the biggest issue right now is the consistency factor. I mean, that's really since so many there's so many more brands now that make electric vehicles, you know, Rivians, whatever, like all arguably produce a better product than tesla but what tesla has is the charging network mm -hmm. which is unbeatable i mean that's didn't someone just announce that they can use rivian tesla? rivian did yeah so, so they'll set, they'll have an adapter but i mean like yeah the biggest because a lot of these charging networks are third party not from the brand tesla obviously they're they're one of their big benefits being the supercharging network they're going to make them themselves versus mm -hmm. like a rivian who i believe has some of their own charging stations but they're relying on third-party chargers which right. have been historically very unreliable mm -hmm. and the customer service sh shit you know so that's i think that's right. what the biggest drawback and i can i can see Tesla like a little bit of hesitancy to start installing these because as soon as you've got chargers you're out of date Right. There's something new that's coming mm. up behind you. Well, the, yeah, I mean, the Tesla ones are so straightforward. Those, those are, but I mean, even you look at the Formula E, 
the right. first season yeah they had to oh, swap, yeah. they cars. swap cars yeah. yeah and you know the middle of their, their runs now the you know one battery would last a whole race well now they're talking about you know 30 seconds getting five kilowatt hours of charge in for the season yeah so it's insanely expensive you're, you're, so. it is you're talking you the te- you see the cable comes out from the pit yeah. lane it's huge to charge the cars that fast yeah but as as the government start regulating things you know european right. unions regulating mm-hmm. things as the racing technology is getting better the, the consumer technology is going to get better too exactly but at it's what point at what point do you say i'm going to wait for it to get better before i do anything and when do you pull that trigger yeah no that's right so yeah. how long how long until like the roads like wirelessly charge the car you wireless charging is not the, i mean the, you, yeah. people how, people how would always would that be people always would ask like okay like, why can't what are, that the, the most common questions for electric cars that i would get that you know the the biggest why don't your cars have solar panels why to charge a battery why don't like this and that like why does it takes people don't realize that these batteries are 100 kilowatt hour batteries they're massive so if you think of like Think of like a electric. Um, or oh yeah, Sean I, broke I, this down for me one time. It's really helpful. So so think of like um, like an uh, LED flashlight that has a J. Uh, uh, I can't think of it right now. It's like a seventeen seventy two battery. Those it's like rechargeable this. A little ones? bigger than yeah, a little bigger than a double A battery. <laughs> so a little bigger than a double A battery that powers an LED flashlight. Yeah. So when I was there, they they've evolved. The batteries are better now, but it was 7,000 of those batteries would be in a battery pack and they were in a series. So they were in individual packs. There was like 16 packs within the big pack. So when you would drive the car, certain packs would drain. And then when you charge them, they would charge again. So they were always, you know, Charging. switching packs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, One of Freddie Tavares videos on his P one build, you can see he goes to the, the shop with the, the electric batteries yeah. and they open it up and you could see all the cells. Yeah, it's lined crazy. Up. Oh, wow. and yeah. So it's like literally, you know, the people don't understand if you, a solar a, a solar panel which is tr- pretty inefficient would literally mm-hmm. power a fan in a tesla <laughs> like a, that's that's what a solar panel would do um and you know the, the the batteries charge extremely extremely fast especially when they're drained it's the last 20 percent of mm-hmm. charging an electric car that takes the longest amount of time and the easiest way to explain that and how batteries charge is like if you think of when you go to a large supermarket or like a Home Depot and the parking lot is empty, finding a parking spot is very easy, right? So when a battery is about 20% full, think, uh, I'm sorry, about 80% full, think about a, a parking lot that's very full of cars, like during the holiday season, you actually have to go look for a parking spot. And that's essentially what the last 20% of charging yeah. is like, the the whatever electrons or whatever it is, fucking charging the Sorry car cussing. has to <laughs> has to find areas yeah, right. in the battery pack so that's why it takes long but again like a tesla will charge like i will i will drive i drive to new jersey pretty frequently and i take the tesla i will stop for 10 minutes and like walk go to the bathroom in a rest area come back and the car's fully charged so is that why like with cell phones like i mean Cell phones, one battery. Yeah, yeah. but it, with the iPhone, they always say like, "Oh, the best, the best charging is being between twenty and eighty percent." Is that the same kind of idea? Or there's no memory. There's no memory in a well. And for as far as Tesla go, there's no memory. Meaning like because the battery packs are so large and there's so many individual cells and they drain in a certain way, you can keep your car com- com- plugged in all the time. Mm. I mean, over time, yes. Like I've had my car. I don't know. You've had it a like, long time. Not, not it's in great long, shape. Five but years. But I probably lo- yes, yeah, fabulous shape. I've probably <laughs> lost. Uh, I've probably lost like five miles of range. That's three hundred miles on a charge. I mean, yeah. it's it's nothing. I mean, I'm not like an EV advocate. It's just I, it's it makes sense. Like mm. for like especially living on this island, it's like no brainer. Like mm-hmm. I so, never we use it as like we we drive it around town. I just plug you it let in. Me borrow it that one time. I needed a I needed a car because mine had, uh, had a flat. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just it's like, a great it's, it's a great car like to just commute. It's a good tool. It's so a good it's a great car. tool. He gets he in and goes. You literally you in you goes, get in the car. Less. It's already on. You put it in drive. You're already yeah, moving. Preheated. Like, like remembers my shit. Like remembers Sorry how, how it, like like wake up in the morning. It's heated. <laughs> snows i turn on the defroster like it's just yeah. like a stupid thing that like yeah. you know it's like great tool i love cars and i absolutely love like i'd much rather have anything else but from like a day-to-day like driving river to school it's like are you kidding me like yeah so so how long until like 
I feel like there's a huge debate in the in the car world where there's like a lot of like your traditional car enthusiasts who are like, I'm I'm not going to get an electric car and I refuse to get an electric car because it doesn't sound good and I like manual transmissions and mm-hmm. everything else. And I feel like I definitely fall into that category. But well, like, uh, maybe that's just like me being like ignorant. But it's like, I I can. Sl- what I'm trying to get at is how how long until you think that like all the cars are electric. I so I don't think we'll ever get there. Right. Yeah. But I think there will be restrictions on where you can drive them. Interesting. So I like think the gas powered cars you're saying. Yeah, I think um I I don't know, I disagree. So there's oh, there's already yeah. some cities yeah, duke it out. Let's, let's go. Well, I'm that's here nice. for the same time. Just, I think if you I'll were to talk to me if, if you were to if you were to ask me 5 6 years ago, I would say everything was going electric, but the combustion engine and I I I think people also have the wrong I think people think that EV is the only way to go because of the the green aspect. I think that's a bullshit argument. Yeah, I'm, I don't I'm think with you they there. are. I don't think like I didn't work at Tesla because I'm okay. green. You just swore. I know that's okay. All right. But like you know, but I I, I, I just think brother. I think they're great products. They make sense. It's not <laughs> like a it's it's not a oh I drive it because I want to save the world sort of a mentality. I think people do have that mentality, but. I, I think people also have the mentality that they're never going to buy an EV because they're a man and they they yeah. drive they want that yeah. they want that 800 horsepower. But in Speak reality, up. in the reality, it's like don't okay, so you 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 don't want you don't want convenience like safety. They're the safest cars. You don't want like all the all the things that come with it, all the benefits that come with it. It's almost like it's an ignorant argument. Mm. So I'm going to, I'm going to review a couple of those things because I think this is a good conversation. So are they safer? A lot of the time. Yes. Right. But there's been, and this is coming from a civil engineering infrastructure standpoint. Like we said earlier, he's smarter than me. EV, EV cars are destroying guardrails and safety measures because on the roads so heavy. because they're so heavy. Yeah. So there was that video, I think they took a oh, Rivian, yeah, the Rivian. Oh, yeah. and drove it straight into oh, a guardrail. Yeah. So heavy. F-150 yeah. bounces off of it oh, like pinball let me just and say, the Rivian just plows through. Bad day to be a guardrail. <laughs> so this is <laughs> not a good day. <laughs> like, imagine being so, a guardrail so, in this 10,000-pound so electric so kind of kind of boat model that S. hit the bridge was like EV? full of like EV full batteries. That's why it plows through the bridge. But I mean, put it in perspective, a Model S, the full-size sedan, weighs as much as a Yukon Denali. Yeah. Full size you come in on. So you're yeah. taking all this weight and you're, and you're all focusing it into this in one w- center, low yeah, center of gravity. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then there was the story of um, that woman who just died in the Tesla because she couldn't, the first responders couldn't break the windows to get her out of it. And that could be she a, also had a blood alcohol Tesla content thing. of two point whatever, but that's, that's a different story, but it's, it's the breaking of the window <laughs> to get, get her out. So she, you can manually open the door. It's she probably, yes, I, that's true. As a former, like, yeah, yeah. There's a thing there. There's, yeah, there's a thing. There's, yeah, a there's user, user error with, right. I won't, I won't comment. <laughs> I don't want to get sued. Um, another Being thing that we look at with some of the land suit. development is, um, we are working on a, a warehouse development and the local fire department wanted to know if lithium batteries are being stored because they have an entire different system that they have now to put out lithium fire batteries. Yeah. Lithium I mean, lithium battery fires. Out. No. So, so they actually would, if the, if the warehouse was going to have this, they would request on site a cabinet for themselves to have the things hmm. that they would need to handle right. the situation. I mean, when we, when we are, our, our service department, like at our, uh, buildings or tesla buildings we could not keep the batteries inside they had to right. be stored outside yeah. i mean they're mm. when when they when they go they go mm-hmm. there's no question about that mm. so but from and, a crash standpoint right and i want to get back to what you were saying about you know kind of what i was saying of where cars will be allowed so oxford university has a road that they have taken all cars off Mm-hmm. No cars at all are allowed on this road anymore. It's become a walkable area. Uh, Burlington, Vermont did the same thing. They had this whole strip that they said, no mm-hmm. more cars. It's going to be a walking like mall. Like a main road? Right. Okay. Outside of that street in Oxford University, they now have cars that are allowed on those roads. They must be electric, nothing else. Oxford University is very progressive in this field. And I think we're going to see something very similar happening in like city, city centers. centers yeah. yeah. Okay. Areas. I could see that. That's what I, was I think you'll thinking. be able to take your, you know, 1960s Mustang out on the back roads and drive them somewhere. But I, I do see, uh, cities, busy metropolitan areas where there's a border around them with restriction on what's allowed to cross. But what I, what I'm saying is like, I think there will, I don't think you'll have exclusively, I think you'll have hybrid technology where like for that example, 
super efficient engine mixed with a battery. I do think we're heading that way too. With like I, a city mode. I agree. Yeah. Like I don't think that's there'll a, be purely. That's a good point. The city like, mode I don't thing. Think, I don't think there's going to be purely electric. Right. That's it. I mean, look at what New York City's about to do. They're putting a, a like a fee on if oh, you yeah. drive your passenger car into the city. It's like twenty. Which is what dollars. London has yeah. done London's for a already long done time. It. Yeah, the tax. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like a, like, but it's like an easy pass. Yeah, right. It's like a you, you get want to use roads, you're getting built. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm not like yeah. against congestion that. charge. They yeah, call it, right? I yeah. see. That's what I see happening. And it's like they will let your Mustang in. You know, they'll scan your plate. Oh, it's a seven year old car, fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, and on your way out. <laughs> Fifty dollars. Yeah. Like that's how I think that's where we're going. Wasn't that how it's like? I mean, speaking of this exhibit, isn't that how it's like in Japan, where it's actually really hard to have like a enthusiast type car there because of how strict the regulations yeah, are? The, yeah, the, you the, have, the, have like a newer car. The emissions are very difficult. Yeah. Um, the mainstream population, from what I understand, essentially will get a new car every two years. So they smog mm-hmm. it. It's wow. great. It's get new. Get rid of it next car and they just kind of rotate wow. through which is part of the reason why they have so many exports yeah oh uh, yeah, yeah. And that's funny because they're trying to prevent i guess they're doing that for climate purposes in a sense but you're getting a new car every two years kind of defeats the purpose yeah because right you're, 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 you're the material waste material waste yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah again i don't fully understand it i've yeah. never been i i've heard this like third hand or through videos or something but that's how i've in the past understood how they go well, well, like I, I just went to Paris a couple months ago, and I was pretty amazed at how many electric vehicles there were, like in Paris. Yeah. Mm. Well, all fuel, the little electric tax, cars, fuel, yeah, yeah, yeah. scooters. I mean, just yeah. Places like the Caribbean, those islands have a limit on the biggest engine size you can have. Like I think Bermuda has a limit; you can only have like yeah. one point four liter engine true, or right? smaller. It's but tiny it, if you want a big yeah. V six or a big V eight, you can pay more mm. to have that. Yeah, yeah, but. I, and you see Toyota, they've been on the hybrid train fully and have they said, we don't think EV is a way to go yet. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it's very which interesting. Is fine. It makes sense when it comes to the raw materials needed to make the car. For for the amount of battery pack you need for an electric vehicle, I think the number is something around like 50 hybrids you can make. Mm. And if, wow. you take, if you take 50 vehicles off the road with right. 50 hybrids That's true. versus one electric car, your total emissions is drastically reduced yeah. compared yeah. to just the one electric vehicle you're yeah. adding. Yeah, and, and objectively, you know, you're getting like 700 miles of range and your, you know, CO2 output is minimal. It's a very efficient When is, when is the engine. engine running in that case? On the highway, at right. high speed, yeah, low exactly. RPM. It's very low effort. It's getting off the line is what, what the I mean. engine does the most work yeah. for a typical commuter yeah. car. Maybe, and not, that's where maybe the, not 250 miles an hour in a Chiron, right. but... Well, that's where the battery comes yeah. in. To get you off the line, once it's moving, the engine kicks on, but it's really never at full chat. No, so that's why I think you're right that we'll see that more than full electric yeah i don't think we'll ever go full electric unless there's thank god huh <laughs> thank god you get synthetic fuels this conversation too. i can't i can't do this for <laughs> the next 50 in. years it's like yeah no i, I don't do think it. it's yeah. a bad conversation i mean it's just no it's it a is. good conversation it's just like you well know. that's why i think you know going like the young timer car generation like the whatever it's that like 80s, 80s 90s and early 2000s, 2000s like yeah. those cars are just going to continue they already have continued um their values are just going to yeah, I mean, I mean you've got these the selling for what you could four hundred and fifty thousand dollars online right now. What's that? Yeah, you got Skyline GTR, you know, R thirty four selling for four hundred thousand dollars. How do you keep up with that? Insane. I but like, know. you know, I don't know. Well, yeah, we're like waiting. Forty six BMWs. I think those are going to. Oh, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, this yeah. this era of awesome. if motoring is is closing out, and there's a new car that I've been thinking about buying that I'm not going to mention what it is, mm-hmm. but I've told you guys, you guys have seen it, and it's to me, it's the very last of a dying breed it's a brand new car there's a lot like, of those out right now there's a lot of them the black wing is another example of a car that's Great like car. like oh kind of the God. last of of a kind maybe yeah 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 and it's like it's stick, like right the yeah. black wing yeah. yeah oh yeah have you seen our black wing no not yet oh, it's it's great. i haven't either yeah. it's serious i yeah. saw the i saw the uh it's the so demon cool. 170 the other day yeah, I think. Oh, well, yeah. I brought I mean, that so the that swan song awesome a lot of the swan song cars are happening yeah yeah they are porsche's doing it too yeah Yep. Imagine if they did a swan song, Sarah. <laughs> you really like that, love that car. <laughs> I just love the meme. It was for sale yeah. at one point. You didn't buy it. <laughs> Could have bought it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't ripped on Porsche at all yet. Yeah. Can you please rip on Porsche? <laughs> Do you want me to? I know yeah, that, that, that we're, just, we're not supposed to talk about that on this podcast, right? The P, P word. Listen, we have not spoke. I, I don't think there's been a single Porsche reference this entire no, episode. No, we yeah, have I talked about the port. 
Yeah, we but did, that yeah. was just like yeah, but it was kind of like in passing. Yeah, yeah, then I said the ST, but like we didn't go like no, we didn't. Please, until please now, voice your opinion. <laughs> no, yeah, Louis got Louis got a very fair this opinion f- on the brand. And this is it. On um, yeah. Porsche? On Porsche, yeah. This is it. I don't know how deep modern you've gotten Porsche? into this. Yeah, modern Porsche. Okay. So, I, I've i driven a handful. Everything from, you know, first gen Boxster 944s to the Tech Art Turbo S we had. Hmm. They're all amazing cars to drive. Mm-hmm. Love. Mm-hmm. I really like driving them. Mm-hmm. And they, they fit this very niche gap in the market where I can't afford to buy a Lamborghini, but I've... I've graduated from my BMWs, my Mercedes, right? Like they're, right. they're, they're, yeah. they're like a, an attainable goal for a lot of people. Right. So I yep. understand why everybody loves them, but they just don't do it for me. There's That's something, fine. there's something about, um, the fact that the 911 has stayed the same for so long. And I know everyone hates that. You know, <laughs> the Clarkson. The same. Yeah. The Clarkson say the yeah. same. I would love to see the GT3 RSs, the, the high end 911s be a different model. Get the engine in the middle. Get rid of this bubbly shape. Make it more in line with what Ferraris, McLarens, Lamborghinis look I mean, I think the like. argument to that is the, the, ni- uh, the 918, the, 918, the Carrera yeah, GT. I agree. The, I mean, I don't think that'll ever... I don't think it'll ever happen either. I but mean, I'd, it, I'd it, love it, to see what they could do with that entry level of a car, like that entry of a car. I mean, in like that, what in McLaren that does with like the uh, Toro or whatever, or the GT. Like, they've got the GT, but they've got the... Um, I mean, those are like the entry level mid-engine cars. Yeah, right. Uh, so yeah. Yes. I don't think, I don't think I, and I don't, I've been in... I'm waiting to shit on this opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, you're I've Sorry been, for cussing. I've been, and I, I think there's no argument to that. You, I think like everyone, thing that everyone under, everyone, everyone, there is the, you know, the, the, the Cayman, whatever. Yeah, that, that is the car. better platform than the 911. The Boxster, the 988. Right. Yeah, so yeah, there's, yeah. There's, yeah. there's, yeah. there's yeah. the, Hell there's, yeah. there's their argument there, but like, I obviously have no ability to drive these cars at their maximum Same. or even close to their maximum potential, but I've been in cars. Mm-hmm. I've been in them with people who can, and I've also been in like, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis driven at a very high level. And there's just some like the being in them, like the cars are just so dialed they in. They are, which is why I want to I wanna wanna push. I want to see them push in. that a but little bit more. If you look at the, what is it? The RS, the cup RSRs or whatever. Those are essentially mid engine cars. Those that are, point, you're right. They right. Are, those are, those, are, those are mm-hmm. club sport is not right. No, but the RSRs, RS. RS, those are but essentially the RSRs yeah. that are raced. Those are essentially mid engine. Yeah. Um, Dude, the club. But it's also, it's also like, you know, it, it makes, it's it's doing something different. Right? It is. It's you're like, right. It, but it's, the, it's the engineer in me that says, right. You can make it better. They're holding themselves to this standard. They want to keep the look, the feel, the purity of this car a certain way for their customers, for their fan yeah. base. Mm-hmm. What could they do? They make that car compete with the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis yep. and the McLarens and the Astons. They the car is better than, if not as good as all of those other cars I'm mentioning, what could they do if they allowed themselves to mold that car into something different? The 918 is a great example of what they're capable of doing with their technology. But the 918 was what, 2014, 15? 14, 13. 13. 14, 15. 13. Yeah. So yeah. we're talking 10 years since that car has been out and then there's talks of the next yeah, hypercar the coming out, right? Which is electric. But like Ferrari, as of now, Ferrari pulls out a new one every five years. Lamborghini pulls out a new one every handful of years. What that, that million, we're we'll call, call a million dollar entry level car that we're talking about the Porsche is producing. To me, and I think some, uh, like, if you drive an Aventador and then you drive a GT3 RS, I would oh. love to hear your opinion. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's all I'm saying. That's fair. I, I, and, and again, every time I drive uh, one, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I love driving yeah. this thing. Oh, right they're now. all amazing. They are and amazing. We're privileged. To drive. I'll and we're being that. critical of things that I'll never be able to afford. Yeah. But like, you know. But you have the experience. To I be have able the to experience talk about it. of and it. And so I, I can talk about it. And I'm not trying to come off as smug or anything, but it's just like these are. And I, I had this conversation with um, Captain Crankshaft the other day because he was asking about cars I've driven. Shout out, Captain. Yeah, which was, nice. you know, I've driven pr- almost cranker. everything in the collection. <laughs> and. Um, I, it, it, and I was telling him, yeah, there's car, like I ha, I, I enjoy driving. There's, there's certain cars, like for example, the green, um, uh, the green G body, the 80 G body, mm-hmm. um, that was like a 20, you know, 27,000 yeah, it's, it's, it's so fun in. to drive. 
<laughs> and then if you, you know, and then on paper you'll drive a car that's you know a million, million and a half, and you're just like, well, I can't really, you know, yeah. I don't really fit in it, or like it's it's great, and but I actually re- very much enjoy the driving experience of this other car more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I, that. And like for example, like the Lamborghinis look fucking, they sound great. Sorry for cussing. Ding. You know, a lot of them have a single clutch gearbox. Yeah. It only works when you, it only works you when you're cooking. high, high speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. you're right. I, and I, I've like, had the opportunity to drive an Aventador, a handful of yeah. Porsches. I've gotten up, you know, through my working mm-hmm. here. I've, I've had the experience driving a handful of these cars. Right. Nowhere near the limit of the cars. Right. And I'm also not a good enough driver either to be having these right. cars at their limit. So it's, it's the engineer in me wanting to see what they can do. Can they do more? Um, you know, I, I, I like to also, I see the same thing with like the, the Corvette. Like yeah. every time you see one, it's like, oh, it's cool. It's Corvette. You drive one and you're like actually excited. You don't, you don't agree? Yeah. I mean, Corvette obviously did that with the C8, right? They put the mid engine yeah. C8, which is a great car for them, especially like the Zio, especially Z06. the Z06. 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 For the money is like incredible, but it is missing something. C- C6 Corvette. Sorry. Especially the the convertibles. Mm. Drive, like it actually like, you're in it and you're like, okay, I get it. I no, get I love why. Them. Yeah, I mean, I drive love a C six Z R one. I think that's oh like one God. of the most Those epic cars yeah. ever. That's so much car. Yeah. They're it, they're amazing cars. Car. They're cool. And you know, I don't think they're but, but so, I, so I hear you. For me, it's like I want to see them do more, right? Corvette took the engine and threw it in the back. I hear you, but however, however. you're wrong. No, it's fine. Um, I like being wrong. I, no, I, I I understand what you're saying, and a lot of people make that argument. I yeah. I but think. But I also would say, you know, to the to the fact that the cars never change. If you put, um, oh, they change drastically. I agree. They're like they're SUVs so different. now compared. Yeah. To they're very different. If you put our '67 S against the oh my god, it, you would think that it's a, a, well. There a, was a thing that I think was it Pirelli or Michelin put out. Like a yes. picture or an ad with yes. the you know twenty yeah. sixteen Carrera S tires, which are like two ninety fives or three hundred fives, next to like the nineteen sixty five nine eleven tires, which are like this yeah. wide, and yeah. it's like holy like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's a completely yeah yeah I, shape. Well, yeah, shape. It has the same. But what's silhouette. interesting is the but, height's not that different. No, the, no, they're not. The, the roof the lines are almost the same, close. but they're you yeah, know they've just got two wider. football fields wider Correct. and a football field longer. I don't mm-hmm. know. Tires are three thirty fives almost. Yeah, it seems it's like, like hello. My, I, could live I in want there. to say my favorite Porsche in the collection is the uh, Turbo S exclusive. It's sold. Yeah, you love that. Did it really? Oh, oh no, the didn't. exclusive. I thought oh, you said exclusive. Tech, tech Art. Sorry. Tech Art. Tech art. Yeah. about the Tech Art. The yeah. red yeah. exclusive. No, the is, red exclusive is my That's your thing, favorite. Huh? You've Interesting about take. It. Very fast. I, it, 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 and you know, for me, it's, it's the most something. Livable one. It's something about the like the carbon fiber accents, like and. and the red the is a great color. Awesome. The wheels are yeah. amazing. So that they made only made six in in that red color. Yeah. The most of them came that gold, gold. like release yeah. color. Yeah. So I don't know. It's something about that car when when you get the lineup of all of them at yeah. storage and you, like that one it's to the me stands one. out. Well, it's, and it's yeah. it's a combination. I think that of, car is stupid it's, it's fast. such a livable car, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's got these exclusive options. And the wheels to me are the coolest They're thing. So cool. They wheels. paint them in gold correct then they paint them completely over in black and, and then there was a laser that comes on it just etches off the black on the spokes just the enough gold, to reveal gold. so cool coolest thing. it's got all these little and you know i like my quirks my little like you know interesting things about cars mm-hmm. that one for me has has it yeah i love what porsche did with that car yeah mm-hmm. it's a great car mm-hmm. rocket i don't know i just think like the biggest thing for me is why why i like them is having driven so many of them the brand feeling across the board is very strong yeah, yeah. You, they're you, good at what they do. And the owners are the best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The brand, <laughs> the the brand. <laughs> Comparatively, I would say the Corvette owners are no, the no. Best. I mean, as far as like just like you know, obviously there's extremes and everything, but I think Porsche owners are mm-hmm. the least like. Yeah, I I would. It's not like you go into a Ferrari event where it's like. <laughs> I, I would I would agree with that. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen I've seen Porsche guys talk about stitch colors on their steering wheels. Oh, of course, wheels. Yeah. 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 Every, yeah. everything's paint a sample now. Every That's group, true. but every group has like the, a group of owners that are passionate about like the nitty gritty details and how many numbers were produced and like mm-hmm. yeah. i mean that's 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 pretty normal that like yeah you, know, you get that that's every group has that that yeah. doesn't really bother me that just shows passion mm-hmm. in in my opinion but like, as long as you're not you know sticking your nose yeah. up at, at the the cars next to you that are of course what, what you of have, course you know? yeah i don't know i just like the when you drive like the a 911 i love the feeling of the like 
it's hard to describe, but like the feeling of like weight transfer when you go through a turn, like mm -hmm. and across the board you have that feeling, and it's right. just like it There's, feels just feels so yeah. good. I don't they know. care so much about those. They do. They they do they do everything like the best. They are they're the best at what they do. Yeah. That's why I want to see them do better. Yeah. I want to push them. Right. It's a but if, even if like you look at the new GT3 RS, the 992, like just how perfect the wheel. I mean everything. Mm -hmm. Every like panel gap the wheels are perfectly in the wheel well it's just like everything is perfect it's just which is so because it is hard made to by do the germans <laughs> well that car is so crazy because it's like every time well you new, drove it i did drive recently. it recently um yeah uh so you know i've i've driven the 991.1 rs on the track yeah. which was amazing yeah, i've driven the dot two driven the two rs driven the 911r then you know the 992's in sean's away Ben's away. So Nick calls me directly and he has a question about something else that I was answering. And then he was talking to someone else and then he comes back, he says, oh yeah, I can't make it storage today. Can you drive the new RS to my house like right now? And it was like, yeah, of course. Sorry, and it was like with no, with no, no never thought no about it. Yeah. You just get in the car and it's like, here was my quick synopsis. First of all, it makes the last generation feel dated. Which is already insane. feels like a ten or twelve year old car. That's not. Second thing is the nine nine ones, the RS models. It feels like they built up from the base model. Yeah. So they took feels like weight the away. They changed the suspension. They did the exhaust, aero, whatever, and they built it up to be this car. The nine nine two feels like they took a cup car and said, "How do we make this street legal?" Right. It's a completely different, you know, um, nucleus to use a relevant word of a starting point. They completely changed their whole mentality about it. Mm -hmm. And it complete, feels like a completely different car. The NVH is higher, vibrations are higher, m more noise in the cabin, intake noise is higher, stiffer, dartier. And they just announced a facelift for this generation. Do you think, yep. the, you think, yeah. uh, do, you think a G, do you think a GT2 comes out? I oh, think yeah. a GT2 comes out. And what's crazy is from the dot one to the dot two, I remember when the dot two, the 991 dot two came out, mm -hmm. Andy Pruninger had a press conference and you know, he talked about the design things for 10 minutes. He then spoke about the suspension changes and its influence in the, how the car drives for almost an hour. Wow. Yeah, and that's, that's over an LCI change. The Dot 2 992 RS yeah. is going to be better than the Dot 1. Oh, They're going to find a way to improve it. Yeah. It's like, I mean, how do they do it? Well, the Turbo S will be a hybrid. That's what it will be a hybrid. There's going to be a lot yeah, of hybrids. It's going to be so fast. It's going to be, be so fast. fast. Dude. Yeah. I mean, the new Titan's 1,000 horsepower now. Yeah, mm. it's, it's ridiculous. Crazy. It's crazy. I got to drive one of those. Same situation. They're good. Uh, I had to go pick it up at Porsche Warwick mm -hmm. and you know, Ben wasn't around, Joe wasn't around. Yeah. Hey, we need you to pick this up and bring it back. I was like, sure thing. Drove the little blue Fiat up, got in the Taycan <laughs> and drove it back. Yeah. That was an amazing car. Great car. Yeah. I just recently drove a 4S because uh, Nick Jr. wanted yeah. to test yeah, it yeah, out. So I picked it up, drove it there mm -hmm. and I've driven the turbo. I've driven the, uh, the plaid, uh, way too much power in those cars. So the Taycan 4S is the perfect blend of power yeah I like if you need GTS to use all the power pad oh did you yeah oh, that's oh autocross sorry it was oh, a wet autocross yeah. uh, circuit and it was amazing amazing i mean awesome dude drive. i always tell the story but with the plaid you know you get in it and it's like okay you got to kind of punch it once See what i've heard it hurts about. makes oh, you sick well as it, a driver. It, it, it hurt my head my head was already against the uh the headrest pushed my brain back into my head I had a headache for probably an hour so then you know that's th two o'clock nine o'clock i'm at my buddy's house sitting there i've told the story to sean all of a sudden my nose is bleeding. Yeah. I've never had a nose bleed in my life. Back. And it was yeah. because there was so much force in my head. <laughs> and it just you it know, just going to like the fact that it gave you a mild concussion. How about having yeah. to do... To, yeah. I used to have to do... Te when those cars came out... Oh, you just everyone, have to sit there. Test drives. Everyone you know, signed sit up for test drives. I used to do that, like, f I kid you not, see, on Saturdays. See, every hour. See, uh, I, can't do, I can't do roller coasters, so I literally like, would... Okay, I want to test yeah. the plaid. Couldn't do it. I can't do can't do it. Or the, or that would have been like what the the eighty P eighty five D at that. That was point. the P eighty five D came out first, yeah. yeah. And then it was the P eighty five plus. I couldn't imagine. The P ninety then would the P one hundred P one hundred D then the ludicrous right. Then the then the plat uh, the ludicrous Luda. then plat yeah. Mm. And then and then Shawnee was gone. Barry he's in a better place now. Anymore. We rescued him from the evils of Tesla world. Well, Louis. Yeah. You're the hey, man. That was Thanks awesome. for coming. Yeah, glad, Great glad to be here. You know that. Good yeah. updates all around. That Thank was you. fun. Was. We got a whole summer ahead of us. We do. We do. We'll you be busy. Better car tour. Yep. Coming Come up, up in a month. Month from today. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. All set. I've already taken work off for the week of Concord, so we're good. Fabulous. All set. Yeah. Plan it out. Cars and coffee. We'll see you there. Mm-hmm. I want to do, I've been saying this to the boys, me, you, Sousa, Steve, maybe, we do a day in the museum. Yeah, that, would be, that would be fun. Bring the bring the, the OGs shape. back. Oh, yeah, yeah, just all come in here, do the OG gallery for the day. day. Yeah. Oh yeah. That would and be just fun. Just see how it goes. And this is a good exhibit for that too. Oh yeah. And time goes so fast when you're just hanging out. Mm -hmm. right so, I just saw that David Swift's calling. Yeah, I got it. Sean, so this is a big deal. Da David Swift is a producer for yeah. J Leno's Garage. Well, hope you enjoyed Dude, this video. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's you been a long time coming, as I said off camera. A little bit. We yeah. finally teed it up. Well, thanks for having me and. Uh, yeah. You know I'll be around. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. That's true. All right. I do like it. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share. I'm slouching. Tell Ben to stop slouching. Yeah, tell me no to stop slouching. slouching in the comments below. <laughs> maybe it will, maybe it won't. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Nero. Uh.